Welcome back to the Big Fat Anniversary Quiz. Before Channel 4 came along, the only television made specifically for teenagers was the Clearasil ad. <laughs> and once a month, John Noakes interviewed Dave Lee Travis about discos. <laughs> Channel 4's youth shows were fronted by talented and beautiful young women like Danny Bear, Amanda de Cadenet and Janet Street Porter, to name but two. <laughs> Then there was Max Headroom, an odd robotic performer with a square head, plastic-looking face and a side parting, which I think is a good look. <laughs> Channel 4 also makes dramas for young people. Hollyoaks is not only entertaining, but also educational. Before Hollyoaks, I didn't even know how to rape a man. <laughs> if you do a Hollyoaks joke, you should have someone in the corner doing that for the... Why? Because when you watch Hollyoaks on the omnibus, there's always someone in the corner doing... What did the CE man do when the man was arse-raped? What did the CE man do? <laughs> that, you know, that's only if it came in dialogue. You know, presumably it was pictures. You're going to mention it if you're arse-raped, didn't you? Well, <laughs> maybe he just tutted to himself and went... <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> boys. Boys will be boys. What's he like? <laughs> <laughs> OK, straight on to the questions about youth TV. If you're familiar with the annual Big Fat Quiz of the Year, you'll be delighted to know that the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neasden have put on one of their unconventional school plays. What I want you to tell me is what notorious Channel 4 show are they depicting here? Welcome to the show for grown-ups what loves lots of disgusting things. And some music. Hello, I am very, very posh. Hello, I look a bit bad and talk American. Stop! How time. <laughs> Here's a person to make fun of. I'll do anything to be in TV. I'll even kiss this old lady. <laughs> Mitchell Brook Primary School there with production value slightly higher than the original show. <laughs> OK, over to Jules Holland for your next question. Hello, Jimmy. You'll remember that I was the co-presenter of the legendary pop show The Tube and I once committed an act considered so heinous that it resulted in the programme being taken off air for three weeks. But what did I do? Did he swear? Is it he, um... You've got ever such good writing, haven't you? Thank you very much. Are you Catholic? <laughs> I am Catholic. The Catholics write particularly yeah. well. Yeah, Catholics have a certain way of doing an S. He's doing the writing and I recognise that he was Catholic from that. You recognise he was Catholic from his handwriting? Yeah, Yeah, I am writing in Latin. <laughs> OK, following the success of the groundbreaking Network 7 with all the wobbly cameras, the same team launched its less successful follow-up, running in the summer of 1989, broadcast live, rather unwisely, from a nightclub. <coughs> what was it called? So it was the follow-up to Network 7, broadcast live from a club. Oh, yeah, it might be. Yeah, was yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you see, I... Networking. May I say, this is youth TV in the sort of 80s and 90s, when we weren't youths, were we? Well... Jack and Frank. No. 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 I think it's an unfair advantage to our friends, uh, to Team Nine, the... What were they called again? I think I, some kind of bunch of fat wits or something. That's... <laughs> um, yeah. How are you doing with, with Alan, Jack? Fine. We've got the answer. We're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Purely a business arrangement between us. <laughs> Who's no heavy petting, no chit chat, just good old fashioned answers. Because <laughs> it's a quiz. It's on, exactly. Yeah. It's not speed dating, thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's how I like it when I'm in a quiz. I don't want any of that nonsense. No fun. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a quiz, it's an exam, isn't it? We should think of it as such. Yes. It's an exam. We will get degrees in media studies at the end of this. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Channel 4 may have invented youth TV, but they certainly didn't forget the younger kids. Here's stripey TV anarchist Pob and his friend Teddy. Oh. Uh, I don't know why you're laughing. I think the puppeteer had a stroke. 
Yeah, that's why we're laughing. <laughs> oh, God bless. That was, that was Pob. What I want to know is, can you tell me, how did Pob write his name every week during the show's title sequence? Yeah. Mm. Caused controversy, and that's a clue. <laughs> and it's come. Oh, dear. <laughs> that's own. That's own. <laughs> then... <laughs> Uh, OK. And finally, it's over to Jon Snow. Uh, what Channel 4 classic is he reporting on here? A young British boy is at the centre of attention from the world's media following multiple sightings of the child allegedly in mid-flight over parts of Britain and the North Pole. Eyewitness accounts clearly describe the boy wearing blue-striped garments, flying in the company of an unidentified, pale-skinned man said to be well-built with a prominent orange nose and deep-set eyes. When questioned, the boy claimed to be embarrassed by the sightings, stating that as far as he was aware, the people far below had been sleeping as they flew. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 there we go. Done it. Done. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What were the children acting out? What have you got? The word. The word. word. The, the word. word. It was, of course, the legendary show, The Word. <laughs> Do you all remember the, the granny snogged by the young man? I don't remember that, but my, it was my mother's favourite programme. Maybe that's why. She was on it. <laughs> that's how I got this job. <laughs> you think Catherine Zeta-Jones is watching this and thinking, what, what's the fuss about? <laughs> It wasn't my mum, by the way. <laughs> That's not your mum? That wasn't my mum, no. <laughs> you would have put more tongue in, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Jules Holland asked what he did to get the tube suspended for three weeks. Let's see what you got. We didn't know whether he'd bummed that man in Ollie Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> but we went for using the F word instead. <laughs> using the F word you've got? He said, um, groovy fuckers about the audience. He said, if you're a groovy fucker, watch the tube. Well, let's have a look and see. The tube was taken off air because I swore during a live afternoon trail for the show. That was unacceptable. And I hope you groovy fuckers got that right. <laughs> you're all right, well done. <laughs> OK, what was the name of the nightclub-based youth TV show that followed Network 7? We've gone for Network 7 and a half. <laughs> Is it right? No. OK. <laughs> OK, uh, Frank and Carol? Uh, well, we said Club X. Alan and Jack, you've also gone... Club X. We've got Club X. Well, I can tell you, you are absolutely right. It was Club oh. X. Oh. Oh, well, was <laughs> Let's have a look. Lucinda Cuxley is the playwright with the only drama group in Britain called Loose Exchange, which can put together a whole play in less than an hour. Knowledge is power. Yeah, and power is money. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? She's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not the only thing. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Put your hands over your ears. Pick a colour. Blue. Dinner time. It is sometimes best to spend more time on writing a play, isn't it? <laughs> Whoever said that the problem with plays is how long they take to write? Mm. You know, we've got to... By God, we've got to get these things out quicker cos they're so popular. <laughs> just, just take your time, yeah. you know. They last forever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> how did Pob write his name? Your answers? What have you got, Alan? He wrote his name in his own gob. Alan Frank, what have you got? We've got uh, the, he spat on yeah, the he camera. Yeah, he used right on the camera, didn't he? And then Rick right with his finger. Mm. In his gob. On the lens. Yeah, what have you gone for? We went for breathed. We thought he breathed in it and then wrote his name in the, yeah. in the <clears throat> condensation. Well, let's have a little look and see, shall we? Let's have a little look at Pop. <laughs> Listen. I like Look, him. I'd say that, that was a sort of breathy, spitty no, sort of wasn't. hybrid. Look, okay, well, I grew up in Northampton and I know what it's like to be spat at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
OK. Um, well, I can tell you that he actually... Well, the, the makers claim that it, it was breath on the camera, but everyone else thought it was spit, and it caused yeah. controversy at the time. Yeah. It's Imagine caused those... controversy today, hasn't it? <laughs> well, he, well, interesting. Has, I just Look, think he in... clearly has problems speaking. I did like it. He's, yeah. got, he's not got the best What's diction <laughs> of, <laughs> you know, anyone, and it's come out slightly spittily. I think he should be cut a break. Hmm. <laughs> I'm cutting him that break. You will get a point. OK. <laughs> what was Jon Snow talking uh, about? What do you think? Snowman. Yeah. You can count the snowman. Definitely the snowman. Mm. Which also sounds like his rap name. <laughs> ah! I, I think when he actually drops that. his hip hop joint, <laughs> that will be the name of his disc. I'm dropping the snowman, he'll say. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> okay? Leave me be. <laughs> okay, so you'll, you'll say the snowman. It was, of course, the snowman. Well done. OK, let's take a look at the scores. Uh, Alan and Jack have 15 points. They're in the lead. Carol and Frank have 14. Richard and David still in with a chance with 10. <laughs> OK, we've got time now for a special bonus question from one of the legends of Channel 4 comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr Vic Reeves. Yay! <laughs> yes. Come on, Jim. What do you want me for? <laughs> <laughs> well, Vic, I'm doing a quiz. Hey. Yeah, good. Do you have a question to ask them about your illustrious yes. Channel 4 comedy career? When we first started on uh, Channel 4... Oh! It was in the last century. <laughs> when Bob Mortimer, my partner, came onto the stage holding a long pole <laughs> and wearing uh, a paper helmet... <laughs> What would the audience cry out? I know. You, you've, you've got to write this down. That's a it's proper very professional hard to question. Write it down and not just shout it. You can shout it in a minute. Hello, David Mitchell. Hello. What do you want me to do now, then, Jim? Well, <laughs> let's see what the answer is, Vic. Let's, let's see. What let's the see what they've gone Come for. On, let's then. see if yeah. they've got it. And over there, it says, "What's on the end of the stick?" The... What's on the and end, of end, the end, end of the stick, Vic? <laughs> give us some. What's on the end of the stick, Vic? What's on the end of the stick, Vic? I can give these two people a um, uh, correct answer. That one is just too indescriptive. <laughs> oh, okay. What's oh. on the and of no, the. It's, it's obviously <laughs> end. I can't help it if you're pissed. <laughs> well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vic Reeves. <laughs> Good night. You've all been wonderful. Thank you very much. Coming up after the break, find out how some of the biggest names in comedy owe their careers to Channel 4. David Mitchell started in Peep Show, Alan Carr burst onto our screens in the Friday Night Project, and of course, for many years, the bubbly, loose knickered slut Kimberly and Hollyoaks was played by Jack D. <laughs> See you after the break. <laughs>